Strong new car sales in February sends a signal to automakers to stay the course. Unfortunately, it's bad news on the new car front. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, here today with the amazing Elizabeth, the homework gal. As reported by Automotive News, February new vehicle sales were up for most automakers as demand for both retail consumers and fleet customers remained strong. Automakers face a balancing act, keeping profitability up with deeply underutilized factories. Deeply underutilized factories, my gosh, don't miss that, friends. That's nuts. This is a self-admission of a deliberate slowdown and an actual strategy to undersupply cars. They are artificially slowing the production of new vehicles to keep prices high. At this point, we can only hope that one of the car makers breaks ranks and starts cranking out cars in more affordable brackets. I won't be holding my breath, though, but it has happened before. A car manufacturer spots an opportunity to exploit a market opportunity and acts on it. What you hear plenty of in this report is that fleet customers are helping to keep sales numbers strong, and that's a big part of what's happening right now. Yeah. It's not just the everyday car buying consumer who's out there spending. It's also buyers of large quantities of cars, as in fleet buyers. The pace of new vehicle sales improved in February compared with a year ago as previously sidelined demand, including that from fleet customers, kept transaction prices high and incentives low, even as inventory shortages were clearly easing. Yet as the industry continues to bounce along as it has for months with what appears to be a strong strategy in place to produce continued high profitability, the last two months were the first sign of a slight reversion to more historically normal conditions that have been appearing. Results were split in February among automakers reporting their sales, with Ford Motor Company and Hyundai Kia posting double-digit gains, led by Ford's 22% jump. Historically, I've liked Ford, but it's hard to imagine why so many people love Ford right now after all the quality problems they've had. Their CEO has been in the news on countless occasions expressing frustration over their continued quality problems. They've turned out a lot of junk. Meanwhile, Mazda North America, Subaru of America, and Volvo Car USA also posted sales increases last month, while sales fell 2.4% at Toyota Motor North America, despite the first year-over-year -year increase at Lexus since January 2022. Data firm Motor Intelligence estimated February's seasonally adjusted annualized sales rate at 15.19 million, up from 13.96 million a year ago. January's rate was 16.21 million. LMC Automotive said industry wide February sales rose 9.5% over a year ago to 1.14 million vehicles, including some automakers that won't report their sales until the end of the quarter. Oh, sure. So that number is actually estimated. February showing, along with continued demand from fleet customers, convinced LMC to raise its outlook for U.S. sales in 2023 to 15 million, up slightly from 14.9 million. Taking a look at this chart here, new car sales were at 13.47 million last July, then crept up to 13.72 million in September, and then saw a major jump in October of 15.35 million before sliding down to 13.6 million in December. It was here in 2023 that we saw a bounce back of 16.21 in January and then 15.21 in February. Both of these months were surprises to everyone. Jeff Schuster, Executive Vice President for Automotive at Global Data, parent of LMC Automotive said, there was a bit of a surprise on the upside. The industry did a little better than expected. Still a 15 million seasonally adjusted annual rate isn't lighting the world on fire. Yeah. No, but in the midst of an inventory recovery after two straight years of setbacks, that's a pretty significant number. Schuster continued by saying, the supplier disruptions that so vexed the industry last year are still there, but they're down considerably from where they were. He also noted that strong fleet demand is more than making up for any softening consumer demand at the retail level. That's what we're seeing too, friends. So even though a greater number of consumers are sitting on the sidelines, the fleet clients perhaps saw the rapid expansion of inventory we were seeing and decided to jump at the opportunity while it lasted. And by doing so, are driving car prices up by buying them right now. Tyson Jomini, Vice President of Data and Analytics at J.D. Power, agrees. He said, as we saw in January, things are still gaining steam and we're seeing availability increasing as inventory levels recover. Demand remains very strong. Transaction prices set a record for February, up another 5% to over 46000 wow. Right back after this message from our very own Mary Jo. Hello, I'm Mary Jo from the Homework Guide team. Don't Kevin and Elizabeth do a great job? We are so proud of every show our team puts out, carefully researched for accuracy, and designed to help car buyers just like you. If you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button below and ring the bell so you get notifications of upcoming shows. Thank you for listening. And by the way, if you haven't already noticed, check out the light pattern on the ceiling. Pretty cool, huh? 
Dealers are still able to maintain their pricing power, Jomini added, although in a modestly reduced form. He noted that in February, about 31% of retail sales were above sticker price, indicating that strong consumer demand continues to outpace supply. Shame on you guys. <laughs> yeah. However, that figure is about half of what it was over the summer, he said. Automakers aren't going to start incentivizing sales until that number gets a lot closer to zero, or at least in single digits. So things are going the right way, but they're still not there. You see, friends, the expert opinion is that you, the car buying public, have the ability to drive prices down by sitting out of the car market in greater numbers. Indeed, J.D. Power put February's average incentive per vehicle at $1,335 in February, up from $1,275 a year earlier, while incentive spending as a percentage of average sticker was nearly flat year over year at 2.8%, sure. down 0.1 percentage points. <laughs> That's hardly worth mentioning. Yeah. Uh, essentially, no change. True Car estimates incentives fell by $135 from February 2022 to 1522 last month, but rose 9% from January's 1396 level. Incentives are expected by most experts to rise slowly this year as manufacturers walk a fine line trying to balance their factory utilization rates while trying to avoid overloading dealers with inventory. Overloading? Yeah. <laughs> Schuster said, I think we'll start to see incentives creep back in, but it may take a few months. We're going to see a little more balancing from automakers and the discipline holding to not overbuild. But that balancing means that the manufacturers are likely to start enticing consumers to come back in. I don't think it's tomorrow, but it certainly is within the next six months. We both are seeing that poor economic conditions will play a role this year, too. Car buyers like you have decided that you can't afford the ridiculous prices, so you're wisely just waiting. We think this will have an effect as the year goes on. The bottom line is this. While inventory projections we were tracking last fall to put the auto industry on track to lowered car prices by June, the strategic efforts of car makers to hold inventory down deliberately to drive prices up will unfortunately push any real price reductions off until closer to year's end. The industry in North America is running at about a 65% factory utilization rate based on, nuts. Yeah, based on the current sales levels, which means factories are not running as efficiently as they can. Automakers may feel pressure to open the valves on production to maximize profits while demand for both retail and fleet is still high and pricing is holding. The problem for automakers is that North American factory capacity is 23.4 million, including some necessary redundancy caused by the ongoing transition to battery electric vehicles, while the market at least at its most profitable level, is about 15 million. Listen to those numbers, friends. The factory capacity is 23.4 million, but the most profitable level is 15 million. So guess what they're going for? 15 million. If you missed our video titled, Car Makers Are Not Innocent, regarding huge MSRP price hikes, we covered this phenomenon in that story. Schuster, who seemed to have a lot to say on this subject, continued with, it appears at least as of now that everyone is willing to accept a smaller overall new vehicle market to keep profits strong for as long as possible, meaning all manufacturers. It suggests that the automotive world is different now. Some of the trends that were accelerated by the pandemic have validated the model that you can be really profitable at lower volumes, and that's okay, he went ah. on to say. As much as everyone would like to see capacity reach its optimum levels, the auto industry is purposely scaling back their production to hold prices higher. I'm sorry we had disappointing news to share with you today, as much as you'd all like to hear that prices are plummeting. And as you've heard in our most recent show, it's not just new cars that are showing higher prices. Tax season is helping to drive used car prices up too. See our show titled, Used Car Prices Are Going Up, Dealerships Capitalizing on Tax Season. I'd also like to take a quick moment to alert our newest viewers that you can also check us out on Facebook. Please drop by, give us a comment on a post, and give us a like and a follow. And don't forget to come visit our website too, thehomeworkguy.com. When you get there, scroll down the main page to find tons of free downloads designed to help you get through the car buying process without getting ripped off. It's loaded up with free resources for car buying viewers, and we now offer a blog post there too for those of you who like to read. If you wish to show us some love with a tip, there's a super thanks button down below the video, and there are links for tips in the description box. You can easily find them by clicking on the Read More button seen below. All right, if you're new here at the Homework Guy channel, as Mary Jo said, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. Join our fast-growing group of subscribers and become a part of our family. Thanks, everyone, for coming back. And to all of our faithful subscribers out there, you guys rock. God bless you all. I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy, signing off with Amazing Elizabeth, the Homework Gal. The Homework Guy team is serving truth and justice in the car business. We, we gotta, gotta go. go.